Thomas's 60th anniversary was fast approaching, and to celebrate the special occasion, Hit Entertainment promised many new projects, including the series' first feature-length special, Calling All Engines. But what about the Railway series? The Diamond Jubilee anniversary was in honor of the Three Railway Engines 1945 book publication. Up to this point, it had been some time since readers had found a new book in the series. The last book, written by Christopher Audrey, was New Little Engine, published in August 1996 by Heinemann as the 40th volume in the series. After Wilbert's passing in 1997, the publishing rights for the series shifted to Egmont Publishing. Egmont reformatted the book's style in 1998, with the first 12 books by Wilbert Audrey and the last two by Christopher, adding up to a total of 14 reformatted books. This was the only time that the first volume in the series, The Three Railway Engines, received the forward message written by Christopher Audrey, unlike any previous and future editions that did not have it. Unfortunately, this decision displeased both fans of Thomas and the Railway series. The company edited the books bizarrely by altering, cropping, and omitting details of the original illustrations that had previously spread across page after page. Because of the negative feedback, Egmont discontinued and scrapped the new format. In 2004, Egmont made the decision to revert the original 26 books by Wilbert Audrey back to their original format and style. In 2005, much to the satisfaction of fans, Egmont also republished Thomas the Tank Engine, The Complete Collection. This updated release features artwork print sheets by C. Reginald Dalby. Despite the title, The Complete Collection did not feature any of Christopher Audrey's remaining 14 books. Christopher's books were nearly out of print and were hard to find causing the titles to fall into obscurity. With his father's passing and the sale of the copyright, which he had no decision-making power in, Christopher Audrey has had limited involvement with the Thomas franchise. Throughout the 60th anniversary, Christopher and Diana combined efforts to start the campaign Get Thomas Back on Track, with a petition to get all the Railway series titles in full print including the books written by Christopher. Following his appearances at Day Out with Thomas events throughout the UK and assistance from members of Sodor Island forums, thousands of fans signed to show their support for both the Audrey family and their creation. Christopher was not asked to write further volumes for the Railway series following the 40th title. Therefore, Christopher and Diana partnered to establish a new publishing company titled Sodor Enterprises. Under Sodor Enterprises, Christopher wrote and published the follow-up to the island of Sodor titled Sodor, Reading Between the Lines, as part of the 60th anniversary of the original book series. Whilst out of stock, signed copies of the book can still be found and purchased on eBay via Bookwise. On March 21, 2005, Hit Entertainment Public had their portfolio added by Apex Partners, a private equity investment firm in London. Apex purchased the brand for $934 million, converted to £489.4 million, on a cash takeover offer after the financial disappointment of their relaunch of Thomas. On April 2nd, Britt Allcroft issued a plea to Apex Partners with an open letter via Daily Variety by asking the new owners to embrace the ethics and values associated with Thomas. They have always been so intrinsic to his appeal. Two months later, on June 4th, a special event was held at Hatfield House in Hertfordshire. This event was ultimately a disaster. It was a poorly organized sellout event that disappointed all attendees, 
including children and parents. The only sign of Thomas at the event was a cardboard cutout of the engine that appeared in a stage show. Hit Entertainment realized the event was a catastrophe. Because of this, the company set up a special email and phone number for comments, complaints, and refunds, and ensured a travesty like this would not happen again. A few weeks later, on June 26th, Nick Jr. aired a special six-hour marathon of Thomas and Friends Party. Elsewhere in New Zealand, the 60th anniversary celebration at the Britomart Transport Center was an outstanding success, with approximately 15,000 people attending as a result. The United States also had a successful run of the celebration tour event. Nearly 40 railroads featured a 25-minute ride with Thomas, special meetings with Sir Topham Hatt, and activities at the Imagination Station. Japan also celebrated the 60th anniversary with an exhibition at Dai Maru from March 23rd to April 4th, 2005. From July 16th to August 21st, a special anniversary express was serviced on the Tokyo Toyoko Line. On August 31st, a live stage show, Thomas and Friends, the All Aboard Live Tour was shown on King of Adventure in Odaiba as part of Fuji Television's summer event. In addition, a Japanese documentary was produced and shown on television, hosted by Gaku Amada. Throughout the program, Gaku visited many iconic locations in Great Britain, including the National Railway Museum, the Isle of Man, Romney, Hythe and Dimchurch Railway, and the Bluebell Railway. Christopher Audrey was also interviewed as part of the program, albeit having been dubbed over by Japanese voice actor Ryuji Nakagi. Back in Great Britain, the Tallyclin Railway opened up a museum in Tallinn Station with a recreation of the Station Master's Office, or Wilbert's Study. The section of the museum is filled with many of Wilbert's possessions during his lifetime, including his typewriter, various railway magazines, books, timetables, maps, and a Farquhar Mark II layout. In the autumn of 2005, Calling All Engines, the first full-length special, was released on DVD and VHS. The special features the return of both Lady and Diesel 10 both of which previously appeared together in Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Oddly, the special did not acknowledge any of the events of the previously mentioned film. While this was Thomas's first feature-length special, Hit Entertainment produced several feature-length specials for its popular brand, Bob the Builder. In this story, a big storm sweeps across the island of Sodor and causes a huge turmoil leaving the new halfway completed airport untouched until the remainder of the island has been cleared up. However, the steam engines and diesel engines argue and fight, leaving the island in an array of messes and the future of the airport in jeopardy. Ultimately, Thomas suggests settling their differences so everything will be ready for the holiday makers, even if it takes a little help from Diesel 10. For the first feature length special, Sam Barlow recalls that there had been some discussion amongst concerned crew members as to whether or not an extended Thomas episode would work compared to shorter length episodes. Fortunately, this experiment paid off well for both the Thomas crew and Hit Entertainment, who saw the venture as a big success. One of the issues that arose from fan critiques regards Diesel 10. His persona changed significantly from being evil and devious to simply a grumpy yet helpful engine. Meanwhile, Lady only appeared during Thomas's dream sequence alongside Rusty. She received one line and has since not been seen in the series. Mark Seal was asked to write additional material for the special. These interactive learning segments incorporated both narrative and storyline which interrupted the flow of the special more than it did engage the audience. 
During the special, the Sodor Airport and the Suspension Bridge made their debut. Tidmouth Sheds was also rebuilt and expanded to add room for a specific engine. There's an extra space, he cried. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The other space is for Emily, said the Fat Controller. From now on, she will stay at Tidmouth Sheds. Emily was delighted. And so, Emily permanently joined her engine friends at Tidmouth Sheds from this point onwards. The selection of bonus features on the Calling All Engines DVD include deleted scenes, an exclusive music video for The Dream Song, and two additional interactive segments that had been removed from the main feature due to time constraints. The merchandising for the special was well received. Along with the DVD and VHS, there were several tie-in books and toys through Wooden Railway, Trackmaster, Motor Road and Rails, Take Along, and Tomica. Starting with this special in the UK, VCI merged with BBC Video, rebranding as To Entertain. In September 2006, one year later, the special was shown in an exclusive one-week-only event in Cinemax Cinemas in Germany. As of 2008 in Japan, since the change of broadcast licensing from Fuji Television to Sony Creative Products Incorporated, a new range of voice cast took their predecessors' places, including then-narrator John Kabira and Kumiko Higa, the current Japanese voice of Thomas. The Japanese dub of Calling All Engines was released in November 2008. The ninth series aired on television in autumn 2005, where Calling All Engines left off. While the eight core characters continued to be the main focus of the season, the show introduced new characters and locations and marked the return of several other characters, including several engines from the Scarlowy Railway, with the exceptions of Duke and Sir Handel. One of the new additions to the narrow gauge fleet was Mighty Mac, based on the double Fairley locomotive of the Festianog Railway in Wales. This season marked the first appearance of the thin controller, Mr. Percival. His character focused on the narrow gauge railway and allowed Sir Topham Hatt free to continue to run his own railway. Other new engines included Molly, Neville, Dennis, and Proteus. Bill and Ben also made their comeback as background characters with minor speaking roles. Dowager Hat, who previously appeared in the fifth series episode, Gordon and the Gremlins, also returned and became one of the recurring human characters. From the creative side, this was the first season that Sharon Miller contributed to the show as a script editor. Starting with series 9 onwards, the narrator reads aloud the episode titles from the beginning of each story. Thomas and the Rainbow. The Magic Lamp. Respect for Gore. Keeping up with James. Mighty Mac. Similar to previous seasons airing on both Nick Jr. and PBS, the ninth season also contained music videos, interactive segments, new opening and ending sequences with Thomas at Tidmouth Sheds, and episodes from the sixth and seventh seasons, albeit with new compositions by Hartshorn. In UK airings on Nick Jr., a couple of episodes from the sixth season were re-narrated by Michael Angelus. What is that? Huff James. A hot air balloon, said Thomas. It will take holidaymakers on rides around the island. Taking holidaymakers on rides around the island is our job, wheezed James jealously. Then, as if by magic, the hot air balloon rose silently up into the sky. What if the hot air balloon takes our passengers away? Chuffed James. What will happen to us then? What is that? Huffed James. A hot air balloon, said Thomas. It will take holidaymakers on rides around the island. Taking holidaymakers on rides around the island is our job. Wished James jealously. 
Then, as if by magic, the hot air balloon rose silently up into the sky. What if the hot air balloon takes our passengers away? Chuffed James. What will happen to us then? Like the previous season, there were still plenty of technical problems. One in particular caused a huge stir within the fan base. In the early U.S. narrations of some episodes featuring the narrow gauge engines, Rusty was depicted as female. <coughs> However, this was certainly not the case as far as Michael Brandon was concerned. During an interview with SIF, he recalls that the real issue with Rusty's gender change was a conflict in production. This issue was sorted and fixed on two DVDs, Tales from the Tracks and Milkshake Muddle. Rusty's favorite journey was by the lake. She liked to toot her horn there. The sound echoed around the hills. Rusty's horn was special. Rusty was coming down the hill with freight cars full of coal. She stopped when she saw Duncan. Oh, look what you've done, Duncan, she hooted. Why did you break through the barrier? I wanted an adventure, Duncan wished quietly. Rusty's favorite journey was by the lake. He liked to toot his horn there. The sound echoed around the hills. Rusty's horn was special. Rusty was coming down the hill with freight cars full of coal. He stopped when he saw Duncan. Look what you've done, Duncan, he hooted. Why did you break through the barrier? I wanted an adventure, Duncan wished quietly. For the first time, Thomas appears in every single episode, whether speaking or not, for the entire season. Now it's time for yet another BAFTA nominations for 2006. The nominees alongside Thomas and Friends were CBB Summer Watch, Doodle Doo, and Milkshake Summer in the preschool live action category. And the winner was CBB Summer Watch. Aww. Even after the special anniversary celebration was over, Thomas's popularity was still in full steam non stop for the rest of the decade. The Queen held her 80th birthday celebration at Buckingham Palace on June 25, 2006, for 2,000 children. For the party, Thomas and the Fat Controller, portrayed by Jonathan Ross, made a special guest appearance alongside Postman Pat, Mr. Happy, Bob the Builder, Harry Potter, Mr. Toad, Winnie the Pooh, and Peter Rabbit. Sir Trevor Nunn recalled that what made the party so special was that the children will recognize the characters from every kind of story, and the adults will recognize who is playing them. At the Thomas Station for the party, Bruce Steinberg, former CEO of Hit Entertainment, told Her Majesty, more than one million people came to see him at historic steam stations every year. She said she was delighted to see him up close. The Railway Stories saw BBC Audiobooks, now Audio Go, produce CDs for every three Railway Series volume narrated by Michael Angelis and featuring songs by Ed Welsh. As of 2018, a total of six volume CDs of the current Railway Stories were produced and are now out of stock. March 16, 2006 saw the establishment of the Thomas the Tank Engine Wikia an encyclopedia database featuring over 9,000 pages and 100,000 images covering all topics Thomas, including characters, locations, stories, songs, merchandise, and much more. On August 23rd in Adaiba, Japan, Tomi broke the Guinness World Record books for the longest train set track at 1.65 kilometers Shortly before the 10th series, a short-lived spin-off series centering around Jack and the Sodor Construction Company, better known as Jack and the Pack, was proposed. Several episodes were filmed in 2002. I'm Jack, the front loader, he whirred proudly. I can load and unload and carry lots of things. I can haul and shunt, boasted Thomas. 
And I can get you two chatterboxes off to the quarry, laughed Miss Jenny. Phil Fairley had a meeting with Ghislaine's marketing team in New York to discuss developing a companion series that would appeal to six to eight year olds. Jack in the Pack was partially prompted by the success of Bob the Builder. Phil recalls from the meeting that their market research for this specific higher age group were interested in toys that could push and pull, load and unload. Phil suggested that they could use heavy construction machines similar to Bob's can-do crew, but on a much larger scale. The team agreed, and Phil began research on several construction sites to further develop the characters of Jack, his Sodor construction team, their operators, and their leader, Miss Jenny. The pack included a pair of heavy dump truck twins named Max and Monty. Phil wanted to showcase how careless truck drivers can be. Since it was a non-rail spin-off series, it set a bigger challenge in terms of production. All the characters were not track-bound, unlike Thomas and his railway friends. Instead, they were all mobile and guided by radio control in each function, including the accelerator, the steering, crane arm movement, dump mechanism, and so on. Jack in the Pack was meant to exist as a spin-off from Thomas. 26 episodes were originally written to focus on the characters. Then the rights merger with Hit took place, and the whole spin-off concept was scrapped to avoid competing with Bob the Builder. Phil and the team decided that the pack would be a part of Thomas's world in Sodor. This resulted in some last-minute script editing that also presented production challenges. This includes the name change from Packard & Co. to Sodor Construction Company. There was even a sign of Packard & Co. shown in Jack Jumps In. However, within the series, the sign itself was removed. In addition, some episode titles were slightly changed to accommodate further familiar characters. Modeler Chris Lloyd recalls that each character was built to the scale of 20 millimeters to a foot, twice up from the usual Gage 1 models of Thomas characters, and the modelers built Thomas and Percy to this scale. There were frequent changes made in both large-scale models of Thomas and Percy, including larger funnels, whistles, lamps, and brake pipes. George and Trevor were also made in large scale, but only the latter was shown in the background for mud, glorious mud. Each scene in which Thomas was not interacting with the pack, his original Gage 1 model was used. Jack and his friends were built using a brass chassis and a plastic or molded top to reduce their weight. These proved to be the most reliable, using RS motors, gearboxes, and diffs by fellow modelers. With tracked vehicles like Byron and Oliver, the modelers originally used Tamiya tank kits, which left the brain, gearboxes, and their metal tracks to be made. Regardless, they decided to scrap the Tamiya ones in favor of their own gearboxes. Fellow Thomas modeler Chris Lloyd notes that all the pack vehicles had a small flat fan underneath each model for kicking up dust. Phil recalls that each member of the pack has a number, with the exception of Buster, as there was no convenient place to display one. In early concept art by Bob Gall Galliers, Buster the Steamroller was originally meant to be Oliver, who ultimately became the excavator. Isabella is a variation to the name of another lorry, Elizabeth, for both of them share the same basis as their real-life counterpart, a Sentinel DG4 steam lorry. In concept art, Jack the front loader had a backhoe arm and bucket, but due to technical difficulties installing the radio gear, the backhoe was removed from his model. Phil Fairley had stated otherwise that, if a story required Jack to be digging, using his backhoe, and interacting with another character working at the same time, his face would be facing away from the action. For story purposes, it was important to feature the faces as much as possible. Thus, the backhoe was removed. Nelson's concept art showed the intention of having Sodor written next to his name, whilst carrying a Scamel logo on his front, 
and a registration plate that read 201 RGG, referencing Robert Gall Galliers. Nigel was a character that was eventually dropped from the series. More information can be found on the Thomas Wikia, with kind permission from Bob. Of the 26 five-minute episodes that were written for the spin-off, Hit cut the series down to only 13 filmed. Shortly following, the project was shelved. After three years, all 13 episodes were finally shown in a direct-to-DVD release in all English territories and a few European countries from 2006 to 2008. However, in the UK, only 11 of the 13 episodes were showcased on Thomas's Trusty Friends DVD. Jack Owns Up and Percy's Scary Tale were shown on a Woolworths and Sunday Mirror promotional DVD along with three songs from the seventh season. All 13 episodes are available on digital platforms including iTunes and Google Play. Similar to Thomas' pre-eighth season, the spin-off also used the original 35mm cameras and the usual four and a half minute story structure, with the exception of having Robert Hartshorn as the series composer since 2003. Egg Welsh wrote and composed two songs to accompany Jack, The Work Song and One Friendly Family. Despite everything, Jack and the Sodor Construction Company was well received by many fans who enjoyed seeing them reappear from the sixth season, even for a spin-off series never broadcast on television. Several years later, episode titles and summaries from the second half of the spin-off were revealed on both the Thomas Wiki and Roll Along Thomas blog. Following Jack, the 10th series of Thomas was broadcast on television with a total of 28 episodes as opposed to the usual 26. This season introduced four new characters, two of which would become recurring characters in the series, Rocky, the giant steam crane, and Rosie, the lavender pink tank engine. They were featured in interactive instituals and a music video dedicated to a new line of characters from seasons 9 and 10 titled There's Always Something New. During this period, the brass models of Edward, Henry, Gordon, and James were made to replace their original Perspex versions that were finally retired from normal use to join Thomas and Percy, who were the first engines to be built from brass during the production of Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Following Sir Handel's long-anticipated return to the show, the Chinese Dragon, Terence, and Duck also made their comeback, albeit making cameos in music videos for a few seconds. A large-scale model of James was made to fit on a new wharf set to join Thomas in interacting with the sized-up narrow-gauge engines. Writer Abby Grant recalls that Bolstrode the Barge was also meant to have a large-scale model built for the Interchange Wharf set, but did not due to budget constraints. The Wharf set added a steam crane with a curved tin roof and a brick base made by veteran modeler Jeremy King. This was his last contribution to Thomas for David Eaves. The Sodor Airport made its first appearance in the series since Calling All Engines, Jeremy and Harold reside here. Modifications were made to the set in season 10. Now there were only three tracks passing it instead of seven and an additional station platform. Harold gained moving eyes from this season onwards. Other non-rail characters also gained moving eyes before Harold, Birdie in season seven and Trevor in season three. In the episode, The Green Controller, Lady Hat reads a note to Percy at Tidmouth Sheds. In reality, this was a crew member's note. The words, Thomas and Friends, and Crew, can be seen on it. This season marks the first time Gordon uses his trademark catchphrase, Oh, the indignity, huffed Gordon. The show had many continuity errors. It's Good to be Gordon marked the first episode until the 17th season to claim that Henry still needs special call after his accident and rebuild. I'm sending you to crew a fine place for sick engines. 
They'll give you a new shape and a larger firebox. You'll feel a different engine and won't need special coal anymore. Won't that be nice? Yes, sir, said Henry doubtfully. I didn't get my special coal this morning, coughed Henry. My firebox feels funny. However, this continuity error was actually brought up for the first time in Thomas and the Magic Railroad in this particular scene. Morning, Henry. What's the matter? I've got boiler ache. And I'm collecting one, two, three, four, five, six trucks of special island of Sodor coal for you. Oh, thank you, Thomas. Special coal will make me feel much better. A small-scale Season 4 model of Scarloe appeared in Thomas and Scarloe's Big Day Out. Sodor's special place became a special segment for the airings on Nick Jr. and PBS. It featured Gordon's Hill, Knapford Station, the Scarloe Railway, and Tidmouth Sheds. Thomas appeared in 13 out of 28 episodes as the main player, but other characters, like Henry, were given greater amounts of screen time than before. All the music videos from both the 9th and 10th seasons were available through the karaoke DVD titled Songs from Sodor, released in the UK on June 29, 2009, and on the official Thomas YouTube channel. Overall, the 10th season was regarded as a slight improvement to the previous series under Hit's control in terms of writing and storylines. But there was more to come. As of late 2006, after over 20 years on ITV, Thomas found a new home on Channel 5's preschool morning program, Milkshake, where he continued his popularity. In the Railway Series world, Christopher Audrey continued to appear at Thomas events and bookshop tours. He finally convinced Egmont to begin reprinting volumes 27 through 40 of the Railway series by late 2006. And true to their word, in August 2007, Egmont republished Christopher's volumes in both individual print and an analogy book called The New Collection. Following this was the 41st book titled Thomas and Victoria, which was scheduled to be published by Egmont in 1998 as part of a new format publication, but declined due to their lack of confidence in selling power. Thomas and Victoria was published on September 3, 2007, marking the return of the Railway series after a second long hiatus. At the same time, 20 episodes of the 11th series aired on Nick Jr. in the UK and later during the fall in the US on PBS, starting with Thomas and the Storyteller and Emily's Rubbish. The latter episode featured Whiff's debut appearance, one of the four further characters created for the series. This marked the first series to film digitally in high definition for both quality and clarity. This included the intro, the Island of Sodor sequence, engine roll call song, and the end credits. This series was also the first to incorporate the engine roll call lyrics into a shortened rendition of the theme song to replace the opening theme tune. Alongside Whiff and three new characters, several familiar faces made their reappearance for the first time in ages, including Elizabeth, Molly, Murdoch, Neville, and the Caledonian twins, Donald and Douglas, who played prominent roles in the episode, Gordon and the Engineer. In most episodes, there were few differences in scenes between the television airings and DVD releases in comparison. During the initial broadcast, while several interactive segments and songs are recycled from series 8 through 10, a new segment is dedicated to each engine on Sodor called Fun Time with Our Friends. The remaining six episodes of the season were focused on the narrow gauge engines and were released on Engines and Escapades, a straight to DVD release in October 2007 in the UK and March 2008 in the US. The DVD also included a new music video. The beginning of the DVD featured an alternative opening sequence where Thomas visits the little railway. Thomas is puffing high into the hills of Sodor. Hello, 
Thomas. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Narrow Gauge Railway. The DVD featured one of the new characters, a snub-nosed lorry named Madge, who only had two stories devoted to her on the little railway. Several months later, after the initial broadcast on Nick Jr. in autumn 2007, all 26 episodes from the 11th season aired on Channel 5's Milkshake throughout 2008. On March 15th, Drayton Manor Theme Park in Staffordshire officially opened their Europe Thomas Land, filled with 10 rides, 2 play areas, live shows performed by the Fat Controller, and a two-foot gauge railway line circling the land where visitors could take a ride with Thomas, Percy, and Rosie from Knapford Station to Farmer McColl's farm. On May 2nd, 2008, the Sun was first to announce that Hit Entertainment and Apex were relocating production of Thomas from the United Kingdom to Canada to reduce production costs. Hit Entertainment stated in their press release that their properties, including Thomas and Bob the Builder, will receive CGI treatment as a means to cost effectiveness. Thomas was soon relocated from its traditional live action model animation at Shepperton Studios to the computer generated imagery by Nitrogen Studios Canada Incorporated in Vancouver, founded by husband and wife team Greg Tiernan and Nicole Stinn. On the Licensing Biz article, Christopher Scala stated, Bob the Builder and Thomas and Friends have been delighting children all over the world for many years, so it was important to us that any change to the programming format retained the intrinsic charm of the characters and remain true to the core values of the brand. With our world-renowned production partners, Nitrogen, SD Entertainment, and CGCG, we felt it was the right time to refresh and update these lovable characters in CGI and take Bob and Thomas into a new era. Even so, not everyone was particularly pleased with this huge makeover for the show itself. However, the fans didn't take into account how much it cost to create the model series. It was extremely expensive. In terms of the production budget, a gap between the 3rd and 12th series, which was nearly completed in production at this time, will cost from £1.3 million to around £2.5 million, with a filming cost of about £1,000 an hour. Two weeks after this announcement, former series director David Mitten suffered a fatal heart attack and died on May 16th at the age of 69. The news of his death wasn't announced until May 28th, and the fans of Thomas and Tugs were deeply saddened by this loss. Mitten was well aware of the changes to Thomas in his final correspondence with the Sodor Island fan site, having stated that he bid his farewell to the Thomas crew one last time in April. He stated that this farewell was bringing an end to 25 years of quality film work. Britt Allcroft paid a heartfelt tribute to her former business partner, colleague, and personal friend whom she had worked with since 1980. She summed up her thoughts on working with David with wisdom and passion by stating, Great collaborations do not come about by accident. They happen for a purpose. What better purpose than giving so much happiness to so many in the spirit of excellence? If that wasn't enough, over a month after Mitten's death, George Carlin died of heart failure at a hospital in Santa Monica, California on June 22, at the age of 71. He was cremated and his ashes were scattered without any religious ceremonies as he wished. Following his death, Britt Allcroft and Rick Sigelkow wrote tributes in dedication to his memory. Tomy, once again, broke the new Guinness World Record for the longest Tomy Thomas train track just outside the entrance of Thomas Land in Drayton Manor, and it measured 1,800 meters in length. The record-breaking Thomas track was made and added up to a humongous total of 
10,530 pieces together using a variety of Trackmaster elements. Drayton Manor's General Manager Central Services Helen Pauley commented on the day of the record attempt, saying, This is an amazing occasion. Thomas Land is a huge attraction for the park, and Thomas's popularity continues to grow each year. We are thrilled to take part in a Guinness World Records attempt with Tomy and Hit Entertainment, and I'm sure our guests will also enjoy viewing the track and seeing what we have created. It's been great fun to do, and I'm delighted we've broken the record. Thomas embarked his next feature-length adventure in The Great Discovery, produced in 2007 and released on DVD the following autumn. Thomas discovers the lost town of Great Waterton. The Fat Controller wants it restored in time for Sodor Day. But when a new tank engine called Stanley arrives to help with all of Thomas's jobs, Thomas feels that his pride is in jeopardy and becomes jealous of the new engine. Following an accident with a collapsed tower, Thomas is determined to put things right. After he goes missing, everyone needs to find him before the completion of Great Waterton. It all started on July 19, 2007. Former 007 star Pierce Brosnan initially signed on as a narrator for three specials and series, starting with The Great Discovery. I've spent many years narrating these stories to my own children, and I have five children. So uh, I'm fairly versed in the character of Thomas. But uh, telling bedtime stories and then actually performing it in a studio are two different um, techniques, really. Bruce Steinberg stated that, to say Hit is thrilled that Pierce Brosnan is the new narrator of Thomas and Friends is an understatement. Pierce brings a wealth of acting experience to the role, as well as a unique voice that children and parents around the world will recognize and trust. Following this announcement, reports stated both Angelus and Brandon might have stepped down as the show's narrators after the 11th season. However, that was about to change not long before the special's release, as it marked the first and only storytelling contribution by Pierce Brosnan, whose name was now billed as Special Guest Narrator, instead of the storyteller for three series and specials, as previously stated. It was revealed that Gwyneth Paltrow was in talks with Hit to take over as storyteller for both English dubs, making her the first woman storyteller for the series, but she immediately left and the gig went to Brosnan. The Great Discovery also marked the first Thomas special to have a story written by then-head writer Sharon Miller, who later went on to pen four further specials until November 2010. For this special, Jack and the Sodor Construction Company made their triumphant return in some characters including Jack, Alfie, Oliver, Max and Monty would make frequent appearances in the television series following this special. This was the only special to feature three scale models for Thomas in the production of the series. Each Thomas model was built in three different sizes to match the scale for the Sodor Construction Company, the Narrow Gauge Railway, and the standard size model to film the majority of the show itself. Director Steve Asquith recalls that there was even a lightweight model of Thomas on wires used for the in-air shots and hidden rigs underwater for the flooded mine sequences. The Great Discovery featured five songs including the variation of Engine Roll Call with an addition of Stanley as a brief member of the Steam Team and a rap song featured in the end credits titled Thomas You're the Leader performed by Chris Maiden. It was one of the first Thomas songs to ever use a contemporary style of music, primarily aimed at children, and it had arguably become an earworm for a majority of the Thomas fandom since. This DVD was the first distributed by Lionsgate, who went on to release Thomas DVDs for American audiences until September 2014. In the UK, this was the first DVD hit released following the complete 8th series in July 2008. Before The Great Discovery made its DVD release, 
It was shown in selected theaters throughout July in the United States, as distributed by Kid Toon Films. On Saturday, September 20th, 2008, The Great Discovery made a special blue carpet premiere at View Cinemas in Leicester Square. The event was filled with families, children, and big-name celebrities. Upon its release on DVD, the reviews were mixed to positive from families and fans, mostly focusing on the soothing narrative as well as the engaging and action-packed story of friendship, teamwork, and accepting others without resorting to isolation and jealousy. However, when Brosnan's voice for each character was taken into account, not all the reviews were favorable. To some, he sounded quite bland compared to previous narrators of the series. The town of Great Waterton is to be restored in time for Sodor Day, he boomed. The restoration will be a lot of work. Percy was puzzled. What's restoration? He wished quietly. Restoration, groaned Gordon loudly. That is when you make something very old look new again. The Great Discovery had a huge product lineup, such as tie-in books, take-along, wooden railway and trackmaster toy products, a Hornby set and models, the Great Discovery card game, and an audiobook CD of the special. For hit entertainment, the Great Discovery became the highest selling Thomas DVD throughout the first year of its initial release and won the British Video Association Award in the Children's Marketing Initiative of the Year category. This special was also a huge landmark for the series. It was the last Thomas production to feature live action model animation. But Thomas's legacy was not over. With the CGI animation about to premiere, many grand adventures awaited Thomas and all his friends. <laughs>